Hello, this is David Panouche, and I'm just going to do a quick review lecture for when you're trying to remember these basics of evolution to help you in our social psychology class in particular because uh, this stuff is not in the book. To begin with, we know that the biological agenda is to survive and reproduce. The most important thing that your body wants is not to die and to make babies. And this goes for every organism since the genetic, you know, uh, organisms evolved, um, at, even at the level of the gene. The gene really just wants to make copies of itself. And I say wants in quotes because genes don't want things or desire things. It's simply in the nature of the molecule to make copies of itself. Um, <clears throat> so we know in terms of evolution, this idea of the selfish gene helps us kind of understand at what level evolution is taking place. The genes want to make copies of themselves, so they will do whatever they need to do um, in terms of their expression, in terms of the, the behaviors or um, actions that they that they make the organism that happens to be carrying them do uh, in order to make copies of themselves. So this isn't that the organism wants to survive and it certainly isn't that the species wants to survive. It is the genes that are driving this process of surviving and reproducing and any gene that is really good at making its organism making its organism uh, behave in ways that help it the organism survive and reproduce is helping the gene itself to survive and reproduce. I know that can be a little bit hanky, but it's an important idea to keep in mind. Well, when we talk about genes, we got to understand that um, they vary and they mutate, and that's how evolution occurs. If we had every gene being expressed in exactly the same way in every organism, there was no, in other words, there were no variation, and every time that the genes copied themselves, they copied themselves perfectly, we actually would have no evolution take place because evolution actually is a sorting out process through each generation, and if there's no variation, then there's no sorting out. So every gene may come in different versions. There's different, you know, ways that we have eye color, for instance, and they may be expressed differently, and that may depend on the development of the, the organism um, in utero or in terms of environmental factors. Mutation is the same way, except here we have variation because during the copying process or the sexual reproduction process, some kind of mutation takes place and a chemical gets mixed up and we've got a different gene. Now most of the time these variations or mutations actually will be harmful and we'll, we won't see them convey any advantage and they might even just cause the organism to die or to not be able to reproduce. But sometimes there's a variation that conveys an advantage and that's where we see evolution take place. There's two ways that evolution sorts out organisms. The first is natural selection. Recall the biological agenda. First, don't die. Second, make babies or make copies of yourself. Now in order to not die, um, you know, some organisms are going to be better at this and some organisms are going to be worse. Um, so, you know, at its basis idea, natural selection is survival of the fittest. Those organisms that are the fittest survive and those that are not die. That's selection. Some survive and some do not. And you don't have evolution again without any real selection happening. So anytime we have a trait that gives an organism an advantage in survival, um, that can contribute to natural selection. And we've got some examples. Um, it, they might not be traits, they may be outside factors. So if I have a trait in my immune system, though, that helps me not get... <coughs> there you go. Psychological suggestion right there. Not get sick, whereas you get sick and die, then that's a trait that would probably be naturally selected for. If I can run away from predators faster than you, if I have the maybe the intellectual skill to throw a rock you know, or like chip a rock into a knife uh, and you kind of can't figure it out. <coughs> Natural selection could also just be random acts of nature. So if there's an earthquake or a lightning strike, you die and I don't, that is natural selection. So keep in mind, any trait 
that we see that conveys an advantage that succeeds in natural selection will be more common in the next generation because those who didn't have it died. And eventually we might see everybody in the population have that particular trait. Sexual selection, much the same way, except this time the selection is being done not by predators or not by diseases or not by the environment, but by the other organisms themselves. And this applies only to people, uh, mostly to organisms that heterosexually reproduce, where there's some kind of selecting process. And it's not always the female that selects. Sometimes, of course, it's the male that selects. But either way, there's something that is causing some organisms to have more success in terms of sexual reproduction than others. And it could be their strength or their attractiveness or their status or the fact that they're really good parents or the resources they bring uh, to the table. And again, you could see this with variation and mutation. And just like with natural selection, if we have a trait that conveys an advantage consistently, we'll see more of those babies in the next generation with that trait and fewer babies who didn't have it. And eventually we'll, we might see all organisms in that population have the trait. So peacock's tail is a great example of sexual selection. At some point, for some reason, we can't quite explain it, um, we could guess, you know, peahens, those are female peacocks, um, were attra more attracted to peacocks who had more beautiful, longer feathers. And uh, there's a theory that this is um, a signal that the peacock is so strong and so fit that it can survive, um, you know, predators even with this sort of disadvantage of the big tail. Um, so peahens had more sex and more babies with the peacocks with the biggest feathers and the biggest tails. Well, in the next generation, the peacocks with the itty bitty tails, they didn't have a lot of babies. The peacocks with the slightly bigger tails in terms of a variation in their genes had more babies. Generation after generation, bigger and more beautiful tails were selected for and were left with uh, the dominant idea in, you know, the dominant uh, trait in peacocks of these huge, beautiful feathers and tails. The last thing uh, I'm going to talk about is less about evolution basics and more having to do with our class and um, just, again, something that's not in the book, but that's going to be important. So we talk in the class about where are we receiving messages from in terms of how we ought to behave, how we should be behaving in society. And we can put these things into six basic categories. Your parents or your family, they're telling you how to behave or how to act. Uh, religion or philosophy, whether or not you believe it is a whole nother story, but there's certainly messages coming to you that say, you know, thou shalt and thou shalt not do X, Y, and Z in order to live the, the correct way. Certainly in our day and age, the media gives us all kinds of examples of role models, good or bad, on how to behave. Your peers have a vast influence on you. You look around and see how others are acting, and there's a huge advantage to acting in similar ways, especially if those uh, individuals are of uh, high status or popular, for lack of a better word. Education, you come to school, we give you all kinds of ideas on how we think you should act, not just in school, but forever to live a great beautiful, fulfilling life. And of course, laws um, and the state itself in various other ways tells us how to act. You know, the laws say, do not do this, you'll get arrested and so on and so forth. So when we're thinking about all these ways that we might behave, um, we can think about how that evolved, but we also want to think about where are the messages coming from that sort of uh, acculturate us in the environment to behave a certain way. So hopefully this helps you review these ideas, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come see me.